There's two types of mirrored species that you can come across in Australian cotton fields. The green mirror is generally thought to be more damaging and frequently moves into crops during the early squaring phases and persists through into bowl filling. The brown mirror tends to only turn up during flowering and bowl filling. Both species migrate into the crop as adults and they can come from just adjoining field areas or from much further away. The adult females embed their eggs into the plant tissue making them very difficult to see. The nymphs pass through five nymphal stages. Each of these life stages is potentially damaging, although it's more the latter nymphal stages in the adults that are likely to cause the most damage. And the damage depends very much on the crop stage. Myriads cause damage to the crop by inserting their proboscis when they start to feed and damaging plant structures. For very young crops, this can manifest itself as tipping out of the terminal. And that tipping out damage is quite different to, for example, thrip damage in that it's just the terminal that's damaged and the rest of the leaves will be okay. Whereas with thrip damage, you'll often see a lot of distorted leaves associated with that tipping out. As the crop moves into squaring, mirrors will feed on those developing squares and in piercing the bud in those squares, they damage the ovules. The first sign of damage is typically those little blackened pin squares that when you touch them, they break away from the plant. For older squares, feeding by mirrors may not necessarily cause shedding, it might resolve in a bowl that's misshapen or parrot beaked due to the uneven pollination of the locules in that bowl. Damage caused by mirrors to the older squares typically takes a few days to show up, but key signs involve a change of the colour of the square, developing a bit of a peachy hue, and the bracts on the square begin to flare a little at the base. So that contrasts damage from a chewing pest, such as Helicoverpa, where the bracts on the square will flare wide open quite quickly, and when you inspect the bud, you'll see the chewing damage on the bud. For the first 10 days of a bowl's life, damage from mirrors will frequently result in the shedding of that bowl. Slightly older bowls that are between 10 to 20 days of age are far less likely to be shed due to mirror damage. However, the feeding from mirrors is still likely to have damaged the developing ovules within the bowl, resulting in a loss of seeds and therefore lint production, and sometimes bowls that fail to open properly. The damage is often characterised by shiny black marks on the outside of the bowl and if you were to cut that bowl open on the inside of those black marks you should be able to see a defined warty growth. Keep in mind that environmental factors can also lead to the shedding of squares and early bowls. If you've had a period of cloudy weather followed then by some strong sunshine or a run of some very cool temperatures those events can cause physiological shedding. In considering whether it might be myriads or environmental factors that have led to a shedding event it's important to think back over the conditions that have occurred during the previous week and also to consider what sampling might have shown up in terms of mirrored numbers. As the crop matures it becomes less susceptible to mirror damage. Bowls that are 20 to 25 days of age are sufficiently developed that any feeding from mirrors will no longer damage the developing seed or lint within the bowl. Mirrors can be a challenging pest to manage. You need to take into account the crop's development, the stage and number of pests in the field and then seriously consider some of the options that might be available to you as a manager. And in the next video, we'll go into some detail about how to sample for this pest and some of the things that you need to think of in making a management decision.